Hello friends, um, sitting, uh, coming to you today from inside the Land Rover. Uh, it's a beautiful day and um, just didn't want to be in the house. I uh, figure I can do my tinkering out here just as easily as anywhere. So today I wanted to give a quick uh, review, very quick. This is a very complex radio, so I'm just going to do a quick one. Uh, this is a, a Harris RF 7850, 7850. It is a 30 megahertz to 512 megahertz radio. It is the, let's say, um, the next generation, maybe not generation, but certainly next evolution of uh, the PRC-152, which is the military version. This is not a military version. This is a civilian version. Uh, you can buy these on um, directly from Harris. And in fact, I even got a quote from them. Uh, it was a little over ten thousand dollars, and then you got to add some other stuff, software, or cables, or whatever you need to do. Uh, so that's what these things cost. Uh, I got this um, at a very good, a good deal, um, and uh, it's an interesting radio. You'll notice I don't have the uh, I don't have the uh, the RF three ten near me at the moment to show you, but the traditional. Uh, RF-310, which is uh, the civilian version of the, RF, of the PRC-152, has a smaller, narrower LCD screen. Uh, this has got a nice, big, tall one, which gives you lots of information, although I don't know that I love the way they present the information, but that could just be me getting used to it. One of the very nicest things about this radio that I discovered sort of by accident, uh, unlike the PRC-152 or the RF-310M, this does not produce a an audio beep on receipt on transmit so um many of those other uh, uh harris radios because uh, we cannot use encryption when you use it on a clear on a on a plain um text channel it makes a little beep every couple of seconds to let everybody on the net yourself and anybody else you're communicating to know that, hey, this is an unencrypted channel, be careful what you say, and I guess that's a feature that the military requires. Um, but as for us civilians, we don't need it. So this does not have that, and uh, which is a wonderful thing. And let me see, I'm trying to figure out how to turn the squelch off. And, and it also does not have it on receive. So um, let's see if I can figure that out, let's turn the squelch back on. Uh, okay, and I'm not sure I did that right, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, it's a nice thing. So, it behaves much more like a regular amateur radio without beeps. So, that's a positive. But I will say, as I kind of alluded to earlier, the user interface of this radio is, despite the larger screen, is a little odd. Let's just say that I'm not used to it. I'm more used to the, the standard uh, Falcon 3 user interface that is similar uh, amongst several radios, the RF-310, the PRC-152, and even this uh, RF-7800M. The user interface is very similar. You see preset up and down, zeros on the bottom left, program is uh, in the middle, option uh, on number eight, options in number seven, uh, and none of this is the same. Uh, so it's it got some taken used to, and the whole uh, display and, and all that's quite quite a bit different, even though this is technically still in the same family, uh, the Falcon 3 family. Uh, another thing that kind of bugs me about the Falcon 3 family is that none of the side adapters, uh, I have a cap over this one, but none of the side adapters are keyed the same way. They both have a 32 pin. Let me see if I have a, a shot of this. I don't know if I can show it up here. Yeah, so you can see this one has two 32 pin connector, uh, connection, connectors. But right between these connectors, you see these little, uh, some holes, some uh, keying holes. And they're kind of half moon D, D type uh, holes. And the orientation here is different than the orientation here of that D hole, which is different than the orientation on an RF310. They're all different, which is a little frustrating. You figure the same family of radios uh, would have at least some degree of compatibility of accessories uh, but or and cables, but uh, quite frustratingly, doesn't seem to be the case okay but anyway what I wanted to show here is uh, one of the nice differences of this radio uh, is that it has these preset switches here up to 13 preset channels or nets as they call them uh, 
different than the other radio, which is, uh, I think it has six, and then a front panel. So this defaults in front panel mode, no matter where you are, you can move around. So I wanted to show today how exactly you program this radio. Um, and there's a simple way, and then there's a, a way to set uh, presets, which is convenient, of course. Um, the radio, I think, has a lot of presets, although 13 are just shown. 13 are available from the, the top, um, top switch. So in the, in the simplest sense, you've got a down button here on number eight, you've got an up button here on number two, uh, enter and clear, uh, and zero, see right above my finger, right next to the zero is a sort of rotating thing, which means change display. There is, you know, change the, there's several pages, uh, and you can unchange the page of what you want to see. So in the simplest case, here I am, uh, default, uh, this is how the radio comes. Uh, and what you can do is you can scroll down uh, to what you want to change. You hit the enter key next. Uh, now, unlike the other Falcon 3 radios that you use this left and right, here they have a di uh, their own left and right as the soft keys you can see here in the display. So you go here. We'll call this, uh, I don't know, uh, 75 megahertz. I'm just playing around. And you don't have to hit all the zeros. You just hit enter when you're done. Now, the other Falcon 3s automatically ask you about the TX frequency. They say TX equals RX question mark, meaning do you want to you run simplex on the same frequency, and then you can just hit yes, and you're done, and the TX and RX are set the same. Uh, here, you've got to manually do the, the, the transmit frequency. Not a big deal, but just a difference. And here, we'll also do 75 megahertz. Okay, that's it. Um, but a lot of times... It's inconvenient to type all the stuff in, and there may be other things that you want to put in, such as uh, repeater, uh, uh, tones, um, PL tones, digital tones, etc. So you probably want to start setting um, setting some presets. So how do we set presets? Well, it's quite involved. In the, in the other radios, the other handheld radios, it's much simpler. Here, this one's a little bit involved, so I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So uh, you see here the number nine, it says PGM. This is the program button. We're going to go into program mode. Okay. So there are two components to what you want to do. One is net manager, which lets you create a net. And a net is simply a frequency or a combination of parameters for uh, a, that frequency or, or, you know, if you're working split, uh, as in SATCOM or repeaters. Uh, it's just basically a, uh, it's a preset. A net is a preset of, of communication parameters. Uh, and then you can create many of these. It's probably, I don't know the exact number, but I'm guessing at least 100 different presets you can create, maybe more, maybe a couple of hundred, I don't really know. Then the second thing we want to deal with is net assignments. And this is how you assign a net to a preset switch. There may be other functions of that that I'm, I'm sure there are other functions of that, but I'm, I'm not that smart. I haven't figured them all out yet. So let's start with the first. So it was go to net manager and... What do you want to do? Ba 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 ba. Let's go to net, which is to uh, manage your nets. All right. Now, other than the default, which comes in the radio without doing anything, I haven't happened to create a 51 megahertz net. Let's just create another one here, 52 mega. So you hit this plus button here. All right. We're going to give it a name. Hit enter. And we're going to call it uh, 52 megahertz net. 50. You just cycle through, you cycle through the letters and numbers. That's a space. If you do that twice, and we're M, uh, H, where is H, and Z. Where is Z here? Okay, and then we hit Enter to save it. Uh, okay, and then you see this little check box, the soft key for a check mark. We're gonna hit that. All right, now you set other parameters. You can see up at top here, net 52 megahertz. You can call it whatever you want. For example, you can name it one of your repeaters or uh, you know Dayton Net or whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. Uh, and so FSK, we're not doing any of that bandwidth. Not messing around with that. Channel access. This is has to do with, uh, I believe it has to do with certain kind of satellite channels or something. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to go through the, the menu options. Uh, <coughs> this seems to be, um, I don't know what this is, but I leave it alone. Crypto mode, we use plain text, not crypt crypto text, uh, 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 or cipher text, I should say. <coughs> I'm just going to say plain text. We're not doing any modulation, demodulation. 
Uh, and now this is where you set the frequency. So we, even though we said called it a 52 megahertz net, we haven't set the frequency yet. And so we're going to go in here, and just like we did in the other case, we're going to set it to 52. Enter. Scroll down to the TX frequency. Enter. And we're going to scroll over and say 52. Okay. Now you get to set up your squelch, receive squelch. Uh, right now it's set up for tone, which is 150 hertz kind of semi-standard uh, uh, for opening up squelches uh, and TX will it, so it'll, it'll open up squelch when it receives 150 Hertz tone and it will transmit 150 Hertz tone uh, to open up others but more common in my understanding is that this should be set to noise uh, noise squelch so that uh, any kind of carrier will open it up it's just safer that way and it allows allows the radio to interoperate with other radios that may not transmit the 150 hertz squelch. Deviation, fine. Vocoder is clear. RX only no. We want to transmit power high, fine. Second net ID. Don't know exactly what this is. I'm going to look into this um, after some point of time. Home screen. So there are, um, there are, as I mentioned before, there's some scrolling. You can decide what your home screen is for this net. Um, but I'm just going to leave it at page one. Home screen meaning what, what displays on the screen when you choose it. And all kinds of other things. All kinds of other things I'm not going to mess around with. I'm, at this point, we're done. I think I'm going to hit the program button to get out of it. Okay. So now you'll notice we're back on 75 megahertz, which we set up sort of as the front panel or scratch. Uh, you know, change whatever you want. But if I now, if you see, I can select, I can go up to default and select it. And then hit my down arrow, and you'll see I have a couple of options now. Uh, I can go to my 51 megahertz or now my 52 megahertz net. So if I go to 51 megahertz, for example, there it is. And if I go to my 52 megahertz uh, net, there's 52. Uh, but what we really want to do is figure out how to assign this, this uh, switch. All right, just a quick follow-up. So apparently programming the presets... Is a lot simpler than I the process I went through, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you now straight. So you still have to go through and create all your nets. So again, you go into program, you go into net manager, nets, and here I have I've got a default which is like kind of like a scratch pad. You can change it, 51, 52, 53. So you, you first thing you do is you create all the the, the details of your presets or so your nets, and then all you really have to do here is uh, select the knob. So for example, uh, from the last video, position 2 is 51, 52, 53, and then I've got a bunch of defaults. So all you need to do, so for example, here I am on position, uh, I'll just make it position 8. Uh, and all I have to do is I want to change position 8 to be something in particular. I just change it from default to, let's say, 51 megahertz. And that's it. So uh, you'll notice I'll go, I'll go back down now. Hopefully you can see all of this at the same time. So try to get this thing. 51, 52, 53, default, 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 all the way to number 8. And there it is, back to the one I just set. So it really is that simple. Uh, I apologize for the half of that video that was seems to have been superfluous. I don't know what that actually is. I bet there is some complex meaning there. But for simply uh, setting um, knob positions, you create your nets, which are your details of your communication, your frequency receive, your transmit frequency, your squelch details, um, whatever else, crypto, whatever you need. And then it's very simple just to assign, assign it to any one of these knobs. All right. Thanks. Bye.